Hello, boys and girls. My name is Ryan Bailey of the Richmond Police Department, and I will be reading The Little Green Girl by Lisa Anchin. The Little Green Girl. The Little Green Girl, like so many great things, began as a tiny seed. One bright morning, she unexpectedly blew into Mr. Astor's garden and he was just as surprised as she was. Mr. Astor wasn't fond of unexpected things. Each and every day, he followed the same routine, rising with the sun, breakfasting on tea and toast, and then preparing for work. The garden was his home, and it was the only place where he wanted to spend his days without any fuss or nonsense. But tending a new seed fit neatly into Mr. Astor's routine. Each morning, first thing after his tea and toast, he made sure that she had soil for her roots and water to grow strong. And each night, he tucked a warm quilt around her before bidding her good night. In the warmth of the greenhouse, the little seed grew bit by bit under Mr. Astor's care. One bright evening, she peered through her leaves and was astonished to discover the green and glass world around her. When Mr. Astor arrived in the morning, he marveled at the extraordinary plant the seed had become. Well, hello, little one, he said. Welcome to our home. That very day, Mr. Astor moved the little green girl from the greenhouse out into the garden. The little green girl was curious about everything. While he smoothed the damp earth around her roots, Mr. Astor told her about their world. That is a flower called a daffodil, and it blooms in the spring. No, the sky isn't always blue. What you saw last night were stars. Butterflies and birds can fly, but plants and people do not. This garden is our home, and you're going to love it as much as I do. Each morning, Mr. Astor arrived with a whistle and his watering can and spent the first hours of his day with the little green girl before tending the rest of the garden. She craned her leaves to watch him work, but drooped when his weeding took him into distant parts of the garden too far for her to see. While Mr. Astor was busy trimming the hedgerows or grooming the rhododendron, the little green girl made friends who stopped by to play. Though she loved their silly games, she loved the things they told her about the far corners of the garden even more. Her life was perfect until the birds paid their first visit. The birds sang her stories of the wide world beyond the garden walls, and the little green girl wanted to see it all. Mr. Astor had never been interested in far-off places, but he saw how eagerly the little green girl listened to the birds' stories. When the last of the birds flew away, he said, The world may be wide, little one, but there's no need to leave our garden. This is our home. Then he patted the leaves at her crown and wished her good night. The little green girl knew she had to take matters into her own branches. The next morning, she stretched her leaves and sent vines crawling across the lawn. She bristled and shook, but she didn't get very far. Mr. Astor spent the afternoon clipping and grooming her tangled vines and curled leaves. Your leaves are growing strong here, little one. The world may be wide, he said, but it's comfortable here in our garden. This is our home. The next day, she tried pulling her roots up from the ground. She strained and tugged, but they just wouldn't budge. Mr. Astor bandaged her roots where they had pulled. Your roots are grounded here, little one. The world may be wide, he said, but we're happy here in our garden. This is our home. The li little green girl wilted. The world was wide, and she wanted to see it all. Mr. Astor just didn't seem to understand. She had to do something. 
That evening, after Mr. Astor had settled her in and bid her good night, the little green girl devised a new plan. When Mr. Astor returned in the morning, the little green girl was waiting. Well then, little one, said Mr. Astor, it seems that you need more than soil and water to grow. Perhaps you also need that wide world out there. That very afternoon, Mr. Astor packed some tea, a loaf of bread for toast, a mustache comb, and his favorite watering can. When he had finished, he swung the gates open and they stepped beyond the garden walls. When at last they returned, they, far, they found the garden in full bloom. The little green girl was surprised to discover how much she had missed it. And when the birds returned, it was the little green girl who had stories to share. While she told them of their travels, Mr. Astor ate his breakfast outside. In the weeks that followed, Mr. Astor returned to his daily routine. Each morning after breakfast, he spent the first hours of his day with the little green girl before tending the rest of the garden. It was almost as though they had never been away. Almost. Then one bright morning, it was Mr. Astor who arrived unexpectedly. Good morning, little one, Mr. Astor said. The world is wide. Where would you like to go this time? Thank you.